Hey dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to study the morphology of the permanent mandibular canine. What we are going to study in this session? We are going to study the timeline or the chronology of development of the mandibular permanent canine. We will study the number of this tooth in various numbering systems. We will study the landmarks that are present on the mandibular permanent canine. So watch this video till the end. So the permanent mandibular canine, the calcification, it begins at the age of four to five years. And the root, the crown, it is completed by the age of six to seven years. The tooth emerge into the oral cavity by the age of nine to 10 years. And if you add plus two, then the root completion is around the age of 12 years, 12 to 14 years roughly. So what is the number of the permanent mandibular canine in different numbering system? So this is the universal numbering system that start with one and in a clockwise manner, it ends in 16 in the upper arch. Then in the mandibular arch, it ends on the number 32. So these are the mandibular canine so this is the canine of the right side and this is the canine of the of the left side so the number of this tooth in the universal numbering system this is a central incisor this is lateral incisor and this is canine so for the right for the left mandibular canine the number is 22 and for the right mandibular canine the number is 27 and this is the midline. The next numbering system is the Palmer notation system. So in the Palmer notation system, the number of the mandibular canine for the right side is three. And for the left side, it's also three. So the difference is this symbol. This indicate a mandibular arch of the left side and this symbol it indicate a mandibular arch of the right side so three three the next numbering system is the fdi notation system also known as federation dentar international notation system so in this notation system this is the midline mandibular arch and this is the midline of the mandibular arch and these are the, this is the canine of the left side and this is the canine of the of the right side so 3 3 it is pronounced as 3 3 3 means the quadrant number the mandibular left quadrant and 3 means the tooth number here the 4 indicates the quadrant which is right mandibular quadrant and the 3 means the canine so three three and four three so the labial aspect of the mandibular canine so the mesial distal width of the mandibular canine it is less if you compare it with the mesial distal dimension of the maxillary canine so this is the mesial distal dimensions this is the mesial side and this is the distal side so, in short, these dimensions are less in the mandibular canine if you compare it with the maxillary canine, as you can see now in the picture of the maxillary canine. Now, this is the mesial contact area. This is the mesial contact area. So, the mesial contact area, it is more towards the incisal aspect of the canine if you compare it with the distal contact area. So the distal contact area of the tooth, it is more towards the incisal and the middle third of the crown. So these are the cuspal ridges from the cusp tip to the mesial surface. So this is the mesial cuspal ridge or the mesial cuspal slope. And this cuspal ridge, it is shorter. If you compare it with the distal cuspal slope or distal cuspal ridge and this cuspal slope it is larger in dimensions now this is the cervical line 
and this cervical line it show a semi circular curvature towards the root apex and this feature is similar in all of the anterior teeth now some more features from the labial aspect so the mesial outline of the crown is almost straight so this is the mesial side and this is the distal side so the mesial outline of the crown it is straight and it is in line with the with the root surface so it is straight and if you compare with the distal outline of the crown it is little rounded as compared to the mesial outline of the crown now if you see the crown surface on the crown surface there are two developmental depression this developmental depression is the mesial developmental depression and this is the distal developmental depression so these developmental depressions are present on the crown surface uh, however these developmental depressions they are not as prominent as in present in the maxillary canine as you can see now in the picture of the maxillary canine Similarly, a labial wedge is present and this labial wedge is also not very prominent if you compare it with the labial wedge of the maxillary canine as you can again see in this picture of the maxillary canine. This is the apical portion of the root and this apical portion of the root is sharply pointed. So the cingulum uh, of the tooth, it is poorly developed or it is less developed as compared to the maxillary canine. And all of these features, they will help you to differentiate between a maxillary and the mandibular canine. Because sometimes the learners, they are confused between the maxillary and the mandibular canine. So cingulum, it is also poorly developed. And as you can see in the picture of the maxillary canine, in which the cingulum is more well developed. The marginal ridges are there. This is the mesial marginal ridge and this is the distal marginal ridge. Mesial side and this is the distal side. So these ridges, the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge, they are also less well developed as compared to the ridges of the maxillary canine. This ridge that divides the lingual fossa into two, it, this ridge is known as the lingual ridge and this ridge is also less developed as compared to the lingual ridge of the maxillary canine. So overall, the lingual surface of the canine, it is less well developed and it is smooth if you compare it with the maxillary canine. Now, this is the root surface and the root is, is little more than half of the labial surface. So, there is a taper on the lingual side. So, this is the lingual side of the root. So, it is less develop it is less in mesiodistal dimensions as compared to the labial surface of the root that's why you can see part of the mesial surface over here and part of the distal surface of the root from the part of the distal surface of the root from the lingual aspect now the mesial aspect of the tooth the mandibular canine the incisal portion is thin labiolingually. So, this portion is thin in the labiolingual dimension. LA means labial and LI means lingual. Cervical line, it curves. This is the cervical line and it curves towards the incisal aspect and it is common to all the incisors. Now, there is a developmental depression on the root surface. You can see a developmental depression in this area. So, a developmental depression is more, which is more pronounced on the mesial surface of the root. Now, the distal aspect. The tooth is, it is smaller in all dimensions from the distal aspect. 
A developmental depression is also present on the root surface. This is the cervical line and the cervical line, it shows less curvature as compared to the mesial aspect. And this is also common to all of the incisals, all of the anterior teeth. Now, we will discuss the features from the incisal aspect. So, the mesiodistal dimensions is less as compared to the labiolingual dimension. So, this is a mesial side and this is the distal side. So, th these dimensions, the mesiodistal dimensions, they are less as compared to the, this is a labial aspect, as compared to the labiolingual dimensions. So, the labiolingual dimensions, there are more. The cusp tip it is lingually inclined as compared to the maxillary canine. So the mandibular canine cusp tip is just more lingually inclined. In fact, all of the mandibular teeth, they are more, the crowns are more lingually inclined. Uh, the cingulum, this is the cingulum. And the cingulum of the tooth, it is more offset towards the distal side. Thank you very much for watching this video and feel free to ask questions and give your feedback in the comments. Thank you again and stay blessed.